Thanks very much, Dave. Blip Festival has been showcasing the talent of chiptune artists from around the world since 2006, but recently was held in Australia for the very first time. And Goose went along. If gaming culture is all about expression, then the chiptune movement is right at the top. It's all about attitude and freedom, all while celebrating video game history through music. But why should we as gamers get behind this amazing style of music? So Christy, you're in charge of Blip Festival. Can you tell us what's it all about? Blip Festival is a celebration of uh, music, chip music, which is basically old consoles and sometimes new consoles as well, um, combined with computers and modern technology to make amazing music and visuals. It's been going for six years this year in New York. Um, it's also happened in Scandinavia, uh, Japan the last couple of years, and uh, this is the first one in Australia. Maybe it sounds, maybe some people will, will uh, gravitate toward it immediately and maybe some won't, they don't really get it. If you take the people who don't get it to a live show, they tend to get it. Uh, I think that there's, there is something about hearing those, that style of sound, that sound set placed in the context of like a live venue, especially one with like just, you know, really great sound system, um, where the energy really comes through that might ne not necessarily come through for everybody on first listen. The, there's the element of the audience and, you know, there's people reacting to what's happening and it's, it really puts the music at the forefront. A lot of that older chiptune stuff was intended to be background soundtrack for games, whereas this is very much about, like, capturing people's attention and engaging them rather than scoring something else. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of more exciting, more direct. <laughs> But the chiptunes experience isn't only about the music, the visuals also play a big part. What's your job as a visual DJ? Well, uh, I program the same way that the original games are programmed. It's just that they're, you know, they serve one purpose, is to create any kind of visual art. And then, uh, you know, I'll map buttons just like I'm playing the music. So, you know, the B button may fade something and I'll hit it in time with the beat or I'll cycle through different transitions. So I'm pretty much programming a game for the sole purpose of creating visual art, and it's kind of the full package. You have audio made on a Game Boy. The visuals also be made on hardware. It's a challenge, and you know, working in those limitations, you end up making some really nice stuff. If you get someone in there who's really talented doing live visuals uh, and in a way that complements the music being played, um, it just really does create a much more, I think, immersive and engaging experience uh, for the audience. <laughs> How important is something like Blipfest to the Australian chip music scene? The amazing thing about Blip Festival is it brings in a lot of international artists and being the small island that we are, we're sort of isolated from everywhere else. So it really allows people to see the international artists and, and play on a stage with them as well, which is great. And speaking of playing on the international stage, do you remember these guys? Last time we met them, they were making chip tunes in their bedrooms and now they're sharing the limelight with some of the world's best. Well, it, it was kind of always a, an aim. Like, I remember when I was first starting, I ended up finding out about Blip Festival and about these artists who, for me, were the first artists that I'd kind of heard of and seen. It's really about the fact that the Australian community is, is big enough to actually support this, and it's something that we've been passionate about for a really long time. It's great now to see other people experiencing it for the first time and, and realising how, uh, how fun and kind of um, in, involved you can get. For such a relatively small country compared to some of the other places where it's quite big, like the US and like Japan, we actually have quite a thriving scene. The Australian chip music scene is typified by, I think, a lot more adventurousness and uh, a really a total abandonment of convention. Every artist in Australia sounds completely different. 
Uh, I think that's because we're all from different backgrounds. Um, I'm from a sort of a metal and jazz background. Other people are from, you know, more RDM and experimental background. That really comes through in our music and we really express ourselves uh, with our tracks like that. The celebration of chip music and gaming music on older platforms has gone to such a point that it's actually started crossing back over into modern games. Like, I could probably rattle off 10 iPhone games that have awesome soundtracks by guys that have written them on Game Boys or Seegers or tracked them in some way on a computer that's way too old for you to be doing it. It's coming back and I think that is having an influence. With the rise of indie gaming, you're actually seeing quite a lot of opportunities for musicians who maybe don't have big licensing deals or who maybe aren't doing necessarily uh, as commercial work. So there's this interesting like meeting of two very independent, very non-commercial scenes um, collaborating in order to sort of share their audiences to some extent.